New Haven, Connecticut, is a short stretch of sidewalk between the Schubert Theater and the Taft Hotel. It is here that managers have what are called out-of-town openings, which are openings for New Yorkers who want to go out of town. The list of cities where Broadway shows try out before opening on Broadway is pretty short, but in 2022, it will be getting a little longer. This is one of the biggest pieces of entertainment news in, in the history of St. Louis Theater. Starting in January, the Kirkwood Performing Arts Center, the permanent home of Stages St. Louis, will become the starter home for the cast and crew of a new musical based on an old movie. Wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. It was one of the most popular films of the 1980s and widely regarded as one of the best sports films of all time. Danielson. Now, at nearly age 40, the Karate Kid is new again. Yeah! Yeah! Same story, but this time the actors will be kicking up their heels dancing while singing to a Japanese-infused pop rock score. And for St. Louis, hosting the musical's pre-Broadway tryout is quite a score. It has the possibility of being significant because we're hoping that it's not just the Karate Kid, that this becomes a tradition, that St. Louis truly becomes a destination for pre-Broadway musicals. The Karate Kid the Musical was written before the pandemic and recently workshopped in New York. But the final staging and polishing and audience testing is what will be happening in St. Louis. In January, they hope to cast many of the actors here. Come spring, they will also be building the costumes and sets here, culminating in a month-long run of public performances as part of Stages St. Louis's 2022 season, starting on May 25th. And it's all happening at the new, state-of-the-art Kirkwood Performing Arts Center. When I walked in, I really felt that I found a home. I totally, completely fell in love with it. Kumiko Yoshi, the show's New York-based producer, through a mutual business acquaintance, met Jack Lane, Stages St. Louis's executive producer, who for the past 10 years, The Prom, has also been producing shows on Broadway. But because of the pandemic shutdown on Broadway, the waiting list for available theaters in traditional tryout cities like Boston, Chicago, and Los Angeles is incredibly long. I didn't want to wait. That's when I met Jack Lane and we started to talk about it and he told me about this beautiful, brand new performing arts center in Kirkwood. I read the script, listened to the score before I really went after it and went, wow, they have found the stage voice of the Karate Kid. To write the book for the musical, Kumiko Yoshi approached Robert Mark Kamen, who wrote the original Karate Kid screenplay based loosely on his own experience as a bullied teenager who learned martial arts and life lessons from a real life Mr. Miyagi. There was only one problem. He really didn't think the Karate Kid should become a musical. I think he said dumbest idea. She did her homework on me and she didn't appeal to me saying, this is a great moment to retell the story. She said, do you know how much money the person who writes the book or owns the rights to a property makes on Broadway if it's a hit? And I said, you had me at gross receipts. Today, however, Kamen is not just thinking about what he can make, but what they have made. While attending the New York workshop, Kamen became emotional. I'm watching a whole fresh new take on my 40-year-old thing. And it's new, and it's fresh, and it's exciting, and it brought tears to my eyes. Today, Kamen spends much of his time running a vineyard he owns in Sonoma, California, which, as it happens, is how Kamen became convinced St. Louis was the right place for the tryout. I've been to St. Louis selling wine, and I ran it by my wine distributor, and they flipped out. They said, this is amazing, this is great. You know, nobody ever thinks of us this way. And I said, well, this is your lucky day, Bill. I do believe if we can get this experience right, that Broadway will then go, oh, there is a new city in which to try out. And it will elevate St. Louis in so many ways. I already got a couple of phone calls asking that I would tell them my experience here because a lot of people are already interested in coming here. 
Broadway musicals are risky things, but considering the original movie has had three sequels and is now the basis for the popular Netflix series Cobra Kai, the producers are convinced this musical version will surely become a hit. The excitement that we have felt since it was announced, particularly from our patrons and people that I don't even know, is palpable. They want to be a part of it. They, they want to support it. And I think there'll be a, a lot of love that would, be, that would be exhibited for any production that tries out in St. Louis. Yes! How did you do that? Don't know. This is major. First time. <laughs>